Hello guys, today is sort of a part two to my sign making adventures. The last one I did showed how I make signs using vinyl stencils, which you can see that the bottom half of this sign I have done some of that. Um, this one is about how I do string art. I've done a few signs now and learned a few things that make it easier. One of those things being creating a map so to speak, by creating something in the computer for how I want it to look, and then if it's large, I tile print it, which I can do through Illustrator, and then I tape them together so that I can lay them down onto my board and use those to create an outline with my nails, which I will show you in a little bit. Um, so right now I'm cutting off the excess, taping them together, and it will all be perfect for me when I lay it down on the board. Even though only the word hustle is going to be done in string art, I am creating a map using all of it because that will help me make sure that I place the vinyl exactly where I want it for the second word. And you'll see me do that too, even though the bulk of how to paint using vinyl stencils is in the other video, I did go ahead and show you how I am placing the second word onto my board using the map. The first string art sign I did, I didn't watch any tutorials. I just went for it flying blind. I taped my map down on my board and just started putting in the nails. And I found that <laughs> getting the paper back off the board once it had hundreds of nails in it was really difficult. And it left tiny pieces of paper at the base of each nail that I was trying to get out with tweezers and it was pretty unsuccessful. I still have it. It says something inappropriate so I'm not going to show it to you. But I learned a valuable lesson that I can now pass on to you. And I'll show you in a little bit um, a better way to do it, in my opinion. <laughs> than to just shove a bunch of nails into the paper and nailing the paper to the board. I'm just cutting off the excess of this map so that it will be easier for me to line it up on my board and get my measurements and make sure it's centered or at least where I want it to be. The board that I'm using has already been cut to size, it's been sanded, it's been stained. I really like using a very dark wood stain. I believe it's called Verithane and it, the color is called Kona. The paint that I used for the second word is Amy Howard's chalk paint in linen. Here I pulled the backing off of the vinyl. Since it's such a small word I can I can do that and handle it okay. I'm lining it up over my map and sticking it down, checking my measurements to make sure things are where I want them, pulling that back because I don't really need that now. And like in the first video, I'm taking an old card and really getting it stuck down onto the board so that when I pull the transfer paper off the top of it, hopefully it won't take to take the vinyl up with it. Like I mentioned in the other video, I pull it back at a pretty sharp angle and that, that seems to help from pulling the vinyl up with it. Once I get that off, there's not really anything else to do with it other than go through the painting process. But next I will show you how I use my map to create the outline of the words. I generally use small weather strip nails or wire nails. They have smaller heads on them and they won't like consume your whole project. Um, how many you'll need depends on the intricacy of the thing. But I first start with one and a, a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers, whatever. These are a sort of a Swiss Army knife of things that I keep in my car. They work pretty great for this. They do have some, some little teeth in there to grip the nail, so I recommend that over 
something that's just smooth. Grab hold of it and you're going to just give it a tap in just small increments around your design. How far apart, how many, it really depends on the design. So now you'll see I just give it a quick tap, pull it up, give it another tap, and you're going to do that all the way around your design. When you get to skinny portions, um, like say the cross of the T or the loop of the H's or whatever, you are probably going to want to disperse your nails differently, like where you have one at the top of the skinny section, alternate instead of having them right across from each other, otherwise you're going to have a hard time getting the nails in there. You can see on here in the skinny bits that I don't have the nails lined up right across from each other to give a little room to weave the string through. And what you're left with are all these tiny little holes. And don't throw away your map because you are going to want to reference it for something this intricate to make sure you're putting your string exactly where you want it. So then still using my pliers of some sort, I hold the nail to spare my fingers a little agony and I start hammering them in. And those first few nails that you do are going to set the set the height for the rest of the sign. You want to try to make sure that your nails are all at the same height. It doesn't have to be perfect, just roughly so that um, it looks clean. If it happens to go crooked, just pound it from the side and straighten it back up. If you think you've gone too too far into the board, just pull it back up and put it back in at the at the height you want it. It won't be as secure as if you'd gotten it right the first time, but it's I've never had one fall out. Between the string and everything keeping it taut, it stays in. This can be a very tedious endeavor. Your hands may get tired. I find that the higher up you hold the ha the hammer, the easier it is to control it for something this intricate. And it seems to suddenly become less heavy. So you're going to follow all of the tiny holes that you've made and place a nail in there. You may find as you go along that you've decided one hole is unnecessary or perhaps you need another one to define the letter a bit better and that's fine just make adjustments as you go it's just critical if you're doing intricate letters like this that you do have a nail placed in the places that really help define that letter one thing to mention after I created the outline with a single nail with the map and I pulled that off, that's when I waxed the board. You'll see waxing it in the other video, but after I did that, I waxed the board, I hung the hardware, then I went and put in all the nails, because you're not going to be able to wax between all those nails. So now I am taking a little bit of clear Elmer's glue and putting it on the end of my embroidery floss. I'm using a bright pink. I'm putting a little on the end to help it stick to the nail and help me get it into a knot. It can be a little bit fiddly, um, especially with my big old hands. So it's a little bit sticky and I get that loop around the nail, hopefully. Get the knot started. Tie it again. And then I'm going to take a little bit more glue and just put it on my finger so that I can get the tail of the embroidery floss with it. Just the tiniest little bit. It does not take a lot. 
because as I wrap the tail around the nail head, it will help keep it securely in place. I'm cutting off the excess and then with the glue I'm getting that tiny little bit of tail stuck to the nail and the thread so that it's a nice clean start to my sign. Now you're just going to take the thread and start wrapping it around the nails, making sure to reference your map so that you can see exactly where there should and shouldn't be thread. Some people are very, very particular about how they do this and they want to outline it and make sure that everything is perfect. I am often a perfectionist, but for this sort of thing, I don't worry about it. I just start throwing thread around the nail heads and if I think that outlining it in particular spots helps define the letter, then I will. Often I don't worry about it too much. From far away, you're probably not going to see whether it is or isn't outlined. You just need the bulk of each letter filled in. You want to be careful that the head of the nail doesn't split your embroidery floss, pulling some threads on one side of the nail and some on the other side. Having a little bit of fingernail helps with this, otherwise just Get some tweezers or something that can help you push that down under the nail heads. Start wrapping around. Again, I'm all willy-nilly about it. Don't care too much. Just make sure that you are somewhat uniform throughout the letters. Don't have one letter be super full of thread and another one fairly sparse, or that's going to be noticeable. Okay. So my original footage of how I tie off on my string art signs. I didn't like it. You couldn't see very well, my hands were always in the way. Um, but there's kind of no going back once I've already tied it off and glued it and whatever. So I'm going to see if I can do this differently. So the sign is done, but here's some um, crochet thread. Crochet thread comes on um, a bigger skein like this, which is great for these signs as well. Um, you don't have to tie off as often as you do with a little thing of embroidery thread, so you might choose to use one of these. Um, so let's see here. Hopefully my camera's focus doesn't get wonky. So what I do when I come to the end, say this is where I ended. Um, get that in there. I would, let's pretend this is properly done. So we're going to pretend that this is all wrapped around all of my nails. And then I cut off a piece about maybe this long, longer, whatever you want. Depends on how, how you are at tying those knots. So then the tricky part is to tie your knots without it coming unwound. So I take a little bit of the same clear drying glue that I've used to start it or to tie off on all the other sections. And I put a little bit here. I really hope this you can see this. Um, I put a little bit of it here and then I wrap that around so that it essentially is glued to the nail or the thread that's there and that will hold it in place long enough for me to finagle <laughs> tying this into a knot so then I will <clears throat> we all know how to tie knots right so just formulate yourself I'm not going to tie this, but you'd formulate yourself a knot here. It's not the easiest endeavor. 
and then when you pull it tight, okay, my hands are in the way again, aren't they? When you pull it tight, you'll pull it around that last nail, essentially, like that. You pull it tighter than I am because I want to be able to get this off of here. Pull it tight, and then um, you're going to wrap this around another time. Add a little bit of glue to make it stay and then cut it short and take that little tail that you have left and wrap it snugly around the nail head letting it get a little bit of that glue. So between the knot and the glue <laughs> it should all stay nice and safe and sound so that you can be done and have um, a pretty ending and you don't have like a tail of your thread sticking out. You can see here, I hope, this was a an end point or starting, whatever, where I had to tie a knot and glue it and all of those things. You can see how snugly everything is secured around that nail between the knot and the glue. So that should stay pretty well, but if at any point it starts to come a little bit loose, then clear glue will take care of it without making your sign look yucky. Um, I think that's all I got. I can't think of anything else that would help you accomplish this. Um, but again, let me know if you have questions. Uh, click like, subscribe, ding that bell for notifications, all those things. I really appreciate those of you who have followed and are watching these things. Um, it's really helping me be more creative more often and try different things. If you have pointers for how to do these, share it in the comments so we can all learn, um, interact with each other, and until next time, go make something.